collective sun, moon, rising, Venus signs, and cross watchers. Welcome to your eight card draw. What do I need shadow read for this full moon in Cancer to new moon in Aquarius, January 2023. Happy New Year. I'm your reader, Mark Angela Lyons Mal for short. Professional witch, professional intuitive, president of Drawing the Circle Productions since 1998, author of Words of Grace from a Professional Witch, available on Kindle. There's a link in the description box. You can preview it for free. There's another link in the description box that'll take you to my Patreon, patreon.com slash drawing the circle. I love it so much. I know I go on about it because it's a magnificent best career move I ever made for sure. A subscription members only platform that allows me to do all sorts of stuff. Lots of creative control uh, as a mystical artist myself, a reader, a teacher. I've been doing a lot for a very long time in the metaphysical, new age, pagan, spiritual, mystical, blah, blah, blah industry. So I'm glad to be sharing uh, what I do best over there. So if you're interested uh, and you want the deeper dive. All of my subscribers get me every morning in an unlisted YouTube live stream link so they can chat with me about the day's astrology, the magical applications, the spiritual implications. Always doing a little prayer, a little blessing, a little something something to send us on our way. Favorite way to start the day for sure even though it rhymes. Uh, and uh, they get all the, all of my subscribers get all of the extendeds, the part twos from the part ones here on YouTube. And there are an awful lot of them over the years. They can go back in the archives and go check out. Uh, but regardless, if you're looking for a deeper dive, magic, miracles, mysticism, me, uh, uh, come play Patreon on Patreon. We're having a lot of fun over there. And it's been over a year and I love it. And just keeps getting better and better every single day. Come play Patreon on Patreon because I'm the Archangel of Lions, Mark Angel of Lions, Scorpios. Feel that one out. And until then, just call me Mal. Hi. <laughs> I have to keep that opening fun for myself because I have to say it so many times. Uh, but let's get down to business. If you are new to the channel, an eight card draw is just one card from eight different decks, getting you clues, tips, and hints about all sorts of different stuff. In this case, we're doing a waning moon, a timed read, not timeless, a two-week period, uh, a waning moon from full to new in January 2023. As I said, I've recently been doing eight card draws for other things. I read myself for 2023, blew me out of the water. Called a friend, said, you want a freebie? She said, sure. I read, gave her an eight card draw for 2023, blew both of us out of the water. And she's a Cancerian, you know, I'm a Pisces woman. There was a lot of water involved, it was good. So uh, we'll talk about that at the very, very end of the video. But just to give you context, this is about a waning moon. We're looking at the full moon in Cancer, uh, Friday, January 6th, 6.08 p.m. Eastern Time. I am in New York, and a full moon on Cancer on a Friday, the day of Venus, is very loving, very warm. When the moon rides at her peak, then ye heart's desires seek. But as soon as you're done, we go into the waning, the releasing, the letting go, the surrendering. I prefer the language of spiritual alchemy, uh, lead to gold. Lead has three more atoms than gold on the periodic table, so symbolically releasing, because you can, energy can't be created or destroyed, only changed, transformed, transmuted. That's what these readings are for, to take you from a, a, a less leaded, a more leaded timeline to a more golden timeline, healthier, happier, wealthier, you get the idea, I'm sure. So. Uh, we're making quite an interesting two-week period because on the 12th of January, Mars goes direct. On the 18th, Mercury goes direct. On the 20th, Sun goes into Aquarius. And the very next day, uh, new moon in Aquarius, Saturday, January 21st, 3.53 p.m. Eastern. So it really, what starts in the home with that full moon, clear it out because you can launch something, a, a seed. Those are the five card draws I do for the, the, the waxing uh, two weeks of it uh, to really do something for humanity, right? You know, 11th house, uh, very much we are the world, we are the children. So start at home and, you know, send it out to the world, however you want to do that. So it's a general read. Take what resonates. Leave what doesn't. Check your other signs. Get more information about what you're alchemizing in this read. Check the titles for repetitive words. Right? You see words repeating. That can sometimes be the thing. And cross watchers, if you apply this alchemy to yourself, uh, you will transform, uh, but you'll also be helping uh, the Scorpio Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs uh, to do the same, making this world better for everybody because 
Lead is toxic and a killer. Gold is a healer and a conductor. Yeah? So uh, both feet on the floor if you can. Focus on your breath if you will. I will do the best that I can to get you the clarity, guidance, and grace to help everybody shift to a more golden, paradise-based, happy, healthy, wealthy, wise timeline. Why not? It's more than enough for everybody, apparently. Doesn't look that way. But spirit knows better. Please take a nice deep breath. From explanation to divination happens in the still point. Still point. And let's do card number one. Using the Caroline Mace archetype cards, I call upon the collective pantheons of the divine for the Scorpio Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Signs, and Cross Watchers. Watching this video, receiving this reading, the archetype in play, dominant for the Scorpio and the Cross Watchers in the eighth chakra, sending down the codes to the other chakras, what they attract, what they repel, so that they have the choice to no longer delay what cannot be prevented in terms of their own release, letting go, lifetime after lifetime, empowering this archetype from shadow to light, lead to gold, paint to peace, this full to new, uh, January 2023, the visionary archetype, creative family archetype. There's been a lot of them in this series, a lot of creative family family archetypes going on. That goes for creating your own reality to what? Like being a creator, right? Uh, a creator on Patreon. Uh, the shadow attribute written on the card indicates the lead, metaphorically speaking, archetypally speaking. The light represents the gold. Remember those three atoms in there because there are other cards that are going to help us uh, address that. So, the visionary archetype in its shadow, in its lead, selling insights to the highest bidder, meaning you don't care what they do with it, you just want to sell it, uh, compromising your vision to make it more acceptable. Now, you can have an archetype, a reason, a season, or a lifetime. <clears throat> We've all had visionary moments, creatively. Oh, this is what I want to do for dinner, right? That counts, right? Woo, right? Cre very creative thing. Um, but uh, it, I, it comes and goes for me in seasons, right? Where it's something like visions as a mystic, but I mean creatively as an artist. Uh, uh, and I can't dumb it down. Like, no matter how hard, no, I struggle with it. I will not dumb down mystical art. This is how it's coming through me. This is my gig, right? This is my thing to do. Uh, so the light attribute, capacity to envision what is not yet conceivable to others. Look what I do for a living. Uh, willingness to proclaim a vision without regard for personal gain. Check. Check, I would say I'm more in the gold, personally, even though I have no planets in... No, that's not true. I have Neptune in Scorpio, because I'm Generation X. So that's interesting. Reason, season, or a lifetime. Let's keep going. The next four chakras down, we're doing with Daughters of the Moon Tarot. Feminist deck, because we're looking at feminine energy, the internal, the internal. Heart, throat, third eye crown. Nobody knows what's going on there unless you tell them. <laughs> or someone severely empathic. But even that, they may not have the confirmation, right? Uh, so let's uh, talk to the goddesses and ask them what the, what's going on here with the shadow work. Please take a nice deep breath. Still point. Mm -hmm. I call upon my goddesses of water, the sign of Scorpio, powers of the West. Please, beloved goddesses of fixed water. Uh, the scorpion, the, the eagle, the phoenix, like a lot of symbols associated with the Scorpio uh, vibe in general. Eighth house dynamic, money, sex, power, other people's resources, occult, mysteries, mysticism. What do they need to be aware of? The Scorpio Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Signs, and Cross Watchers to help them do the alchemy. Because Throat Chakra, it's a choice. They can delay or not delay this. To help them alchemize that visionary from shadow to light, led to gold, paint to peace, toxic to healthy. This uh, full to new. The Taurus card. Let's talk. It's a court card. When it is a court card on the inside, sure. If you have planets in Taurus, I think that's a pretty clear indication. Have a look at what's going on there astrologically, perhaps. Uh, and if you have no planets in Taurus, being that this is inside of you, this is about fixed Earth. Now, let us address uh, the bull in the room. It is your opposite sign, but it's fixed Earth to your fixed water. They are complementary opposites. It's a full moon, right? Sun in one, moon in the other, however you want to play it. 
So we're looking at the corn mother here. This would be the queen of pentacles in traditional tarot. But uh, the, the great corn mother, the feeder, like Demeter of the indigenous peoples of America, right? The great corn mother. I grew up learning about her. My mom was a teacher. So, you know, live on Long Island. I was taught that by, you know, the whole tradition. Still to this day, she's still teaching me stuff about it. So this is about core values, right? Bedrock values. Like, what's the most important things to you that you truly value? Now, sure, people go, oh, Taurus, the house, the car, right? My money. I get that. But when it's inside world, how about honesty and truth and integrity and your capacity to take your visions and create them. Even if it's, what are we doing for dinner? Download, make it happen. No one else can even imagine it, but you pull it off. It's a metaphor, run with it, right? Or simile, I can't remember if I said like or as. Uh, stream of consciousness, be here now. No, there is great fertility inside here. Something very, very worth and this could be even all four of your chakras, heart, third, third eye, crown, coming together into a very fixed, perhaps stubborn, could be, if it really means standing in the truth of who you are and your life values, honesty, integrity, compassion, right? Everybody's values are different, but, you know, it's either lead or gold and some, or somewhere in between, right? We're all, every day is a winding road. We get a little bit closer and never forget the wisdom of the crow. Outside looking in, lower three chakras, maybe inside out, you looking out at other people, places, and things. The masculine energy, the yang, we're using the mythic tarot based on Greek mythology. It really feels more like my first language than my, that, uh, than any other thing. I do love me some Greek myth. Um, so let's see what, uh, what this is about, your relationships in the world. Please take a nice deep breath. Hmm. Still point. As I call upon my gods of water, the sign of Scorpio, powers of the West, beloved gods of fixed water, please one card in clarity for the Scorpio Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs, and cross watchers watching this video and receiving this reading. What do they need to be aware of? Their relationships in the world, outside, looking in at them, them from the inside, looking out at people, places, things, uh, actions, perhaps, to help them alchemize this visionary from shadow to light, lead to gold, pain to peace, toxic to healthy. Uh, with that Taurus, Mother of Pentacles, Queen of Pentacles, durability, value, fixed earth, Great corn mother, this full to new. The fool, Dionysus. Nice, Thrysus, Dionysus. <laughs> Ooh, he's fun. He's my god. My natal patron. There since birth, the fool. Now, the fool is really not the first card of the major arcana. That would be the magician, the one, right? Zero has no numeric value. It is literally between the worlds, the beginning and end of the cycle, neither the beginning or the end. Often, sure, a leap of faith, but Dionysus was no fool. He was just really inspired. So in terms of a visionary taking a step with their life values intact, doesn't mean you won't be challenged. Not much of a hero's journey without challenge. Uh, but definitely in terms of manifesting something that no, no people can't even conceive it. And, uh, and you don't care if you gain anything from it, monetarily perhaps, or whatever uh, the negotiating point might be, right? I will pay you not to do it. It's like, no, <laughs> no. But, you know, choices. So let's get you a MacCon healing mantra. Nothing like a mantra, a little bit or a lot of bit every day to bring chakras into alignment. Let's see what the ascended masters of creativity have to say. Please take a nice deep breath. They're quite the bunch. Still point. I call to the ascended masters of creativity, everything from creating our own reality to, you know, well, hey mom, what's for dinner? ShopRite has the answer, right? What are we doing? What's the perfect healing mantra for the Scorpio Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs, and cross watchers watching this video and receiving this reading? This one feels fun uh, to help them alchemize the visionary in the eighth, Taurus on the inner, the fool on the outer, this full to new. 
Honoring adversity, adversity. All right, so not as fun as I thought, but a fire reveals a path of renewed direction once the burning is complete. Got it. Now, I want you to imagine it's a horrible scenario. I am a past life dryad. The last thing I want to think about is a fucking forest fire. But imagine, right? You're caught, but you're seeing that there's no, you know, obviously caught, there's no way out. But this is saying because the burning isn't complete, right? A path will reveal itself because that's what adversity often feels like, right? That feeling of rapid transformation. And that's kind of what this one talks about. So w there, there does represent hardship here, or at least adversity in some way, shape, or form. This is why I take private clients. I'm, as a witch, I'm really good at helping out with this stuff. Uh, but ultimately, I can do it with you, but I can't do it for you. Honoring adversity. A fire reveals a path of a new direction once the burning is complete. When adversity is honored, which, by the way, doesn't mean it has to be enjoyed. Oh, yay, I'm suffering. No, you can be totally authentic. When, on, when adversity is honored, life is appreciated as oscillating cycles of deterioration and renewal. Like the wheel of the year, like the turn of the seasons, right? Deterioration is the natural process of new things becoming old, while renewal is the process of old things becoming new. As you learn to honor these two interconnected processes just as naturally as the changing of seasons, right? Turn, turn, turn. Um, uh, you are able to embrace adversity. It's not a punishment, but a gift of renewal birthed out of the ashes of erosion. This is very much a, <laughs> very much a Scorpio card. The, any idea of something rising from the ashes, like Phoenix, one of the ancient symbols of Scorpio? Come on. Uh, this mantra is ideal for processing unforeseen changes, right? So you might be very, very, very clear on what you know and what you want and what's important to value, but there's always a risk with everything. Every day you get out of bed, it's the full card, right? You could be stepping into nice fluffy slippers or cat bar if you have no idea until your feet hit the floor. Every day is a winding road. So uh, uh, processing unforeseen changes as they're happening, overcoming superstitious beliefs, which isn't just about you know, walking under ladders, it's about, well, if I do this 10,000 times, then that will happen. Maybe, but a lot of our beliefs get in the way of just honoring, you know, what's at, what we're actually going through and surrendering the ego, because the ego is going to always say it's not enough. It's always going to say it's too much or too little. It's too this or too that. Never know. This is exactly uh, what we need, though it may not be what we want. That's the soul's voice. And the ego's over here. <laughs> and the soul's over here. Hey, man. And the personality gets to choose. That's the hero's journey. Bloop. <laughs> so we've got a visionary honoring adversity. Okay. Thankfully, we've got the newest deck to the Drawing the Circle Productions divination team, the Archangel Fire Oracle. The unboxing of this will hit in a week or two at the time of this recording. So blown away by this. It's uh, uh, Alexandra Wenman, Findhorn Press, F-I-N-D-H-O-R-N, from Scotland. Look them up. Cabbages in the sand, roses in the snow. Like, when I flipped it over, I went, who published this? Boom. I had no idea they were doing oracles. I will be getting more of them. Uh, uh, but, obviously, this is an Archangelic deck. They don't have the keywords on the card, so you got to look them up. kind of love that. Uh, so I'm not going to read everything in the bookie book, but enough. This, this is the first reading. I'm, I'm using it uh, uh, for YouTube. So uh, oh, let's just see who's, uh, who's helping. Please take a nice deep breath. Sometimes simpler is better. Still point. <sighs> Said no Virgo ever. As I call upon the archangels. Pantheon of Archangels for the Scorpio Collective. There you are. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs, and Cross Watchers watching this video, receiving this reading. Who is assigned to this case, right? Whose jurisdiction is it under? What is their guidance, their grace, their love, their wisdom, their power, their oracle message to help the Scorpio and the Cross Watcher? Alchemize the visionary from shadow to light, light to gold, paint to peace, toxic to healthy, corn mother, Taurus energy on the inside, right? Fertile, but of stable value. The fool on the outside, which is good to come from that 
stable Taurus inside to then, you know, from that proceed with the leap of faith while honoring adversity, uh, because the, the the fire may not be done burning, not in a shadow rate at least. So who are the archangel? Who is the archangel in charge of this, giving them the guidance, grace, love, wisdom, and power? This full to new January 2023. <gasps> You, you, you got the Orlando Bloom card. <laughs> totally looks like Orlando Bloom to me. A lot of people look like Orlando Bloom to me. Most beautiful girl in the world. Uh, Rick Biel. Rick Biel. It sounds like Rick Mayhall. Makes me instantly go back to the young ones if you're old enough to know the young ones. Card number 11. And you in your space suit. <laughs> like UFOs all around you. It's a UFO. <laughs> the UFO. It's a bird, it's a plane, or maybe it's a UFO. No, it's just interplanet Janet. She's a galaxy girl. Solar system miss from the, uh, uh, from the super rock, the schoolhouse rock. Rick Bale, compassion. Compassion, is that one of your life values? You might want it to be. Uh, Rick Bale is known as the chief of the divine chariot, the Merkaba. Jordan Villa Melchizedek, please pick up the courtesy telephone. This cherubim is said to be the power of love. Huey Lewis, pick up the courtesy telephone. And he helps us to recognize an incredible power of having loving thoughts. Uh, a harmonizing angel who can influence centrifugal force and find the most loving point between two opposing forces. Uh, Rick Bale is especially helpful to call upon when working in group situations. Families, tribes, people you work with, all, all of that. Rick Bale maintains cooperation and promotes open communication. Like the cosmic diplomat this uh, in his oracle card, he shows us that when a group strives towards a common goal based in integrity, that would be part of that Taurus vibe, I would think. Uh, they can achieve great things. Like Camuel or Uriel, he uh, can heal emotions and promote forgiveness. There you go, Scorpio. That's hopeful. Rick Biel presides over the four cardinal directions and governs the wheels of the chariot, uh, which are eight fiery angels known as the Hayoth. Well, wheels on fire rolling down the road. <laughs> Notify my next of kin. Uh, message, no matter how badly others behave, ooh, no matter how badly others behave, try to see through the eyes of compassion, treat others as you wish to be treated, and promote harmonious relations interesting. Now, I'm going to say, if this is a Taurus cross-watcher, that could really, really shift uh, about who's the one who's being problematic, right? Uh, uh, because then that would be, you know, Taurus on the inside. That would make sense. Really pay attention to your life values. And there might be some in there you don't realize are your life values until they're challenged. It happens. Uh, yeah, so there we go. Rick Biel. Rick Mile. He needs a little shock treatment. Mm -hmm. Hit you like a real live wire. Okay. References from the 80s and the 90s, folks. Um, uh, let's ground that a little bit with the Divine Animals Oracle. Let's talk to the pantheon of nature, of the aminals. Everybody has spirit animals and totems. I have had lots of black cats in this life. Each of them are individual spirit animals of kitty cats, right? And they reincarnate over and over with me, at least in cycles of three. It's so it would seem there are more than three. Uh, but the totem of the black cat is all black cats that have ever been, ever will be, the sum total of their spirit, soul, wisdom, and all that. That's a bit much. Everybody has them. So uh, let's see who's helping you, because they're really good with shadow work, because, you know, the unconditional love and all that. Please take a nice deep breath. Oh. Still pouring. the Divine Animals Oracle, because it allows me to tune to the pantheons of nature in terms of the animals, the spirit animals and totems, please, for the Scorpio Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Signs, and Crosswatchers, watching this video, receiving this reading, who swims with them, who walks with them, who flies with them, who crawls with them, giving them the protection, the support, the guidance, the grace, the love, the wisdom, the power, the magic, and the oracle message to help them alchemize the visionary from shadow to light, lead to gold, pain to peace, toxic to health.
healthy. Illusion to truth with Taurus life values on the inside, fool on the outer, honoring and adversity with compassion with the, 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 the cutie pie angel. This full to new. You got the meerkat. <laughs> Great. I'm going to Hakuna Matata in my head. Stop. Okay. Uh, responsibility. Yeah, because meerkats, they are tribal AF, man. Oh, good goodness gracious, you big meerkat. Uh, yeah, definitely not feline. Uh, I would know. One would think. 16, you know, archangel lions and all. Well, they seem to share the same habitat. I see some coyotes and some zebras in there. Well, it looks like they're... Having a party. One of them's got a big stick. <laughs> Beware of the meerkat with the big stick. One more. Card number 16. Just going to read you the first part and the last part. Responsibility. Do you take responsibility seriously, or is it easier to blame others or outside influences? Well, that's a little right in your in your face, on the nose. That's a little sharp. Uh, there should be a balance between responsibility for others and yourself. Someone may not be honoring their word. Developing altruism is important. Teaching others the skills you have mastered is a highly honorable act. As a visionary, that could be powerful. But look, family members usually don't want to hear your visions. Oh, good, you're more spiritually advanced than the rest of us. How wonderful for you. Let's have a party. No. <laughs> Nobody ever. <laughs> Saboteur archetype, baby. Uh, the magic. Meerkat magic is all about altruism and responsibility. Such small but fierce creatures watch out for each other and work as a community to educate and protect. Call upon the energy and magic of meerkats when you need help with yourself or someone else to hold their word or to fulfill their responsibilities. Oh, I got a list of people I could be calling in the meerkat for. Meerkat energy is also valuable in facilitating teams in difficult conditions. Now, a team can be a family, can be a circle of friends. It was going to stretch the meanings of these words in general reads, but that's why I do private readings with people. So I can ask them the questions to pinpoint and make a general read way more specific specific. All right. So we've got a visionary honoring adversity with compassion and responsibility. That feels good. Let's uh, remove some of them, their atoms, with the whispers of Lord Ganesh, a Hindu elephant headed god of prosperity, success, but the remover of obstacles. And certainly those three atoms can't be created or destroyed, only changed or released and removed. Please take a nice deep breath. And I love him. <sighs> nice trunk. Still point. That was very Scorpio, wasn't it? <laughs> He's got a great sense of humor. <laughs> He's been doing this a very long time. As I call upon the beloved Lord Ganesh, I love you. <laughs> Please, one card in clarity <clears throat> for the Scorpio Collective. Sun, moon, rising, Venus, signs, and cross watchers watching this video, receiving this reading. I make you laugh. That's why you let me get away with what I get away with. <laughs> so please, what is your guidance, your grace, your love, your wisdom, your power? There's not a womp womp card in this deck to help the Scorpio collect womp womp to help the Scorpio collective. Sun, moon, rising, Venus, signs, and cross watchers alchemize the visionary from shadow to light, lead to gold, paint to peace with Taurus on the inner, fool on the outer, honoring adversity. It's not going to be easy, obviously. But with Rick Biel, the hot archangel of compassion, call, make a call. I'm sure he'll return your call eventually. Uh, with the responsibility magic of the meerkat in play, what have you got for them? How do they make their way through this shadow to light, led to gold, paint to peace, this full to new? Decision. Decision. It's your decision. This is your free will decision. <laughs> Got a big stick, a big mace. <laughs> mace before it spritzed out of cans, right? Or, or I'm sure they might call it somewhere else, but that looks like a war mace to me. Card number 31, decision. This book is awesome. Uh, Angela Hartfield, she does Whispers of Love Oracle and other stuff, uh, but I love her work. Ready? Breathe in the Ganesh decision. Decision. Consider all of your options to make an informed choice. And I'm going to sense that as a visionary, you probably see a whole lot of different options here. 
but before you jump, before that fool card, you actualize that and step into the magician making the choice or the decision, you make sure you're really stable on the inside with that Taurus. What exactly do you want in this situation? Are you satisfied with the way things are moving in your life? Ganesh is guiding you to know that your desires are within your sights. Odds are in your favor. The decision that is before you is either sticking with what you know or breaking out and trying something new. Gee, what do you think that's going to be for a visionary? Uh, this is a time for veering out into a new adventure and, or making a decision that deviates from your typical trend or habit. Ganesha will gift you with a greater understanding of who you are and what you are capable of creating. Zero in on a goal. Oh, zero, the full card. Zero in on a goal. Take a step to make the selection. <laughs> like off a cliff. Um, uh, you have worked hard and really evolved through your life lessons. Get ready for a change. Motivate yourself by taking time to rejuvenate. Oh, fabulous. Uh, treat yourself to simple things that bring you joy. Discover new activities that take you away from routine. As you move through the day-to-day -day schedule in new ways, you create new thoughts. Uh, uh, when Ganesha is holding the mace called Gada, G-A-D-A, -A, like you gotta get a mace, he is challenging you to be more decisive. Once you start being more strong-minded, you will create the opportunity to reflect on your longer-term goals and desires. You'll then be in a better position to plan ahead and ensure to achieve those goals. You know, this is preparing for a new moon as well, right? So a new beginning here. You benefit now from a newfound sense of confidence and are ready for a major change. You might consider travel to exotic places, further education, or a major career change at this point. Uh, this will expand your learning and development and grow your horizons beyond the, your immediate environment. With careful planning and moderated approach, you will set yourself up for success now and moving forwards into the future. And then we can also then interpret then 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 we can interpret this as the wisdom that you have gained from sticking to your values inside. That can never be stolen. No one can steal your life values. You can go against them, and that's okay. That's part of the the journey, right? We all make boo boos along the way. But even our boo boos are part of the cosmic ineffable plan. Good omens. It's a good omen. Oh, I miss you, Terry Pratchett. Uh, okay, so we've got one card left, and I think we've got some feline intervention. You want to come up, Melks? Here, come sit. Be cute. Come on. He's a Taurus. He's not gonna. He's gonna do whatever the hell he wants. Yeah. No. So let's get our last card. Down the gold within the lead. The hidden blessing with the blessed bee by Lucy Cavendish. Love the prayers in this book, and that's why I do them for real. Uh, I try and keep the shadow reads in particular a little fun, a little jokey, because sometimes they could be a bit rough. I mean, you got honoring adversity, and it is very much the Scorpio card. Uh, but at the end of reading the bookie book from this, it ends the reading, uh, but then I have to release the Scorpios and the Cross Watchers, usually by letting any residual goofy that needs to be set free out. And this is my last reading for the day, so maybe worth uh, hanging around to the very end. Ready? <laughs> the gold within the lead, the hidden blessing. Please take a nice deep breath. Still point. <sighs> As I call upon the pantheons of all pantheons, please, a delegation from all traditions, lineages, and cultures for the Scorpio Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Signs, and Cross Watchers watching this video and receiving this reading, please. What is the hidden blessing? The gold within the lead, it's already there, here and now. All they have to do is their best to cross, the, to cross every T, dot every I. There's a highly individualized curriculum for each and every one of us, particularly in a general read on YouTube. So please, what is the light at the end of the tunnel? The gold within the lead, the hidden blessing for the Scorpio Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Signs, and Cross watchers alchemizing the visionary with the Taurus energy inside fool on the outside honoring adversity with the angels of compassion uh, meerkat magic responsibility making some kind of decision this full to new a blessing for healing of injury or illness now I'm gonna say for some of you this might not be your illness right 
if you are a visionary healer, and remember, for some people, Bach flower remedy is visionary, right? It's so out of the box. Right? It's been around since what, the 70s? Dr. Bache, Dr. Bach, right? Oh, they just little, need a little clematis, right? Just put it in their martini. I'll have a clematis martini, please. Uh, I mean, gorgeous, gorgeous emerald green, lady of the forest, dryad vibe here. But for a blessing for healing of injury or illness, but as a visionary, that kind of wound, injury, or illness could be all sorts of different things. So, let's see what the blessing is. What number are we here? Card number 42, the answer to life, the universe, and everything. There you go. We got that going for you. Uh, and uh, we're going to do this one full out. Just keep in mind, if you're not suffering, and you know, we're looking at honoring adversity here, so again, play a little fast and loose with the interpretations until it fits. Please take a nice deep breath. Pantheons of pantheons confer and convey this blessing through me for them, for the well-being of all. Still point. Card number 42, a blessing for healing of injury or illness. A blessing to bring to you all that will restore and revive you in your time of need. May the bloom of health blossom upon your pale cheek and may the strength of the great old trees and beings begin to flow again through your veins. May the cells of your body begin to regenerate and turn over again and again until all that was not well is no longer resident within the holy form your spirit has taken in this lifetime. May the urge to stand again, to laugh and dance, to move and smile into the eyes of strangers be yours, and let the healing come within the breath, so that within every intake something uh, of the green given world and the depth of the ocean frees you from ennui and lassitude. Did I skip a thing here? No, oh, I'm good. That made sense. May you begin to rise from your bed refreshed and hopeful and may the muscles of your body grow firm and long. Scorpios, with good use, let your hair shine, your eyes sparkle and the strong white bones in your body support your movements. May the nurturing time within the cave of healing have brought to you compassion for those who suffer. There's your angel. A deeper understanding of what it's like to be the outsider for a time, Scorpios, you know what that's like. And a new appreciation of the perfection of form you have been born into. And if you are not the same as you were before the time of illness, let that part of yourself go. And focus now on the new being you are becoming, rising from the ashes, honoring adversity, and bring this to birth through the support of your body. Allow any habits of thought or body that will not support the return of blessed health leave now, for they are not yours. And you are here to be seen and to be a part of the world. Let yourself make the very most of the blessing of your health. Be outside amongst the natural world. Breathe deep the mountain air and sing the song of your shining blood out into the valleys and into the meadows. You are as natural as the flower, as strong as the metal beneath the earth, and you will be reborn to yourself. When it comes, be joyful and know this blessing can be worked with and enjoyed for all the days of your life to come. Be well, dear soul, and help others to find their health too by being an example of that shining energy now and always. For the well-being of all and with harm to none, as we will it, so let it be done. So would be, so it is, that was good. A healing read, it's a healing read, but you know, you might have ideas about this other people can't handle, and that's okay too, be compassionate. We're all learning, every day is a winding run, a little bit closer, did you like it? Did it make you laugh? Hit the thumbs up, ended well. You're gonna recover from whatever this is. 
uh, and subscribe to the channel if you want because I'm not stopping and hit the notification bell because you know I put these out when they're ready or, or I schedule them because what other choices are there really and if you want to book me for a private reading there is a link in the description box booking a reading with Mal so it's everything you ever wanted to know about booking a reading with Mal really it's a, it, it could be it's its own channel but it's not uh, I'd be glad to read you just reach out really how when where it's all in the the video but if you want me every day because some people do uh, come play your on patreon just go look go look aren't you curious <laughs> why so serious are you curious go look seekers humans heroes angels witches immortals mystics gods goddesses eight different levels like the eighth sign of the zodiac scorpio go have a look see duxy see if you like it and remember most importantly no matter who you are no matter where you are I love you. We're all in this together. You heal, you're helping us all heal, and Scorpios can do the deeper dive than most. So hang in there. Heal. Hail. Farewell. And blessed, blessed be.